Now, I will take this opportunity to introduce you to the keynote speaker today. Honorable Ministers, Members of Parliament, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. The end of conflict and the dawn of peace bring about a wide array of challenges. The post-conflict scenario in Sri Lanka was no different. Addressing these challenges ranging from political, social, psychological, diplomatic and security concerns was the core to sustaining the hard-won peace. The government of Sri Lanka, under the leadership of His Excellency President Mahinda Rajapaksha, stood up to the challenge and responded with a coordinated strategy, integrating ministries and agencies and national and international relief agencies. The strategy so formulated was put into action with the fullest support of the armed forces, which adopted rapidly from war fighting to nation building under the visionary guidance of the Secretary of Defense and Urban Development, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha. We are privileged to have none other than Secretary of Defense and Urban Development delivering the keynote address at Defense Seminar 2012. Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha joined the Sri Lanka Army in 1971 and rose to command the 1st Gajaba Regiment and Infantry Battalion in 1989. He engaged actively in combat leading troops successfully during all major operations conducted by the Sri Lanka Army then, among which Operation Trivida Balaya to liberate Jaffna Fort, Operation Liberation to liberate Vadamarachi in Jaffna, and Operation Balavege to liberate Elephant Pass stand out. He was decorated with the Ranavikrama Padakkama and the Ranashura Padakkama for gallantry. He also functioned in key staff appointments at Army Headquarters as well as formation headquarters and instructional appointments at the Army Training Center, the Ethalava, and the Kotalava Defense Academy, Ratmalana. He underwent military education and training successfully in India, Pakistan, and the United States of America, and graduated from the Army Command and Staff College, Wellington, India, in 1983. He retired from regular force of the Sri Lanka Army in 1991. He was entrusted with the responsibility of spearheading the successful campaign to defeat terrorism in Sri Lanka as Secretary of Defense by His Excellency President Mahinda Rajapaksha in 2005. He is a revered figure in Sri Lanka for leading the military operation that succeeded in ridding the country from terrorism. He was conferred with a doctorate by the University of Colombo in recognition of the services rendered to the nation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to call upon Secretary of Defense and Urban Development, Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksha, to deliver the keynote address. Thank you. Good morning, Professor. G.L. Pires, Minister of External Affairs, Dr. Subramanian Swami, Mr. Lali Viratunga, Secretary to the, the President, Mr. Karunathilaka Amanugama, Secretary of the Ministry of External Affairs, your Excellencies, the Ambassadors and High Commissioners of other nations in Sri Lanka and members of the Diplomatic Corps, Secretaries uh, to the Ministries, the Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ajit Namad Kabral, Chief of Defence Staff, the Commander of the Army, Commander of the Navy, the Commander of the Air Force, Inspector General of Police, senior government officials, senior uh, military officials, former commanders in the army, distinguished speakers and invitees from friendly foreign countries, and distinguished delegates, members of the media, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me 
great pleasure to address the opening ceremony of the Defence Seminar 2012. This is the second successive year in which the Defence Seminar is being organised by the Sri Lanka Army. On behalf of the government, I take great pleasure in warmly welcoming to Sri Lanka all of the distinguished delegates who have come from many countries around the world to attend this event. The theme selected for this year's seminar is towards lasting peace and stability. Under this topic, Sri Lanka's post-conflict efforts on reconstruction, resettlement, rehabilitation, reintegration and reconciliation will be discussed. Uh, this is both appropriate and timely. Last year's defense seminar focused on how the defeat of terrorism in Sri Lanka was accomplished. As Sri Lanka enjoys its third year of peace and stability after the defeat of terrorism, the great progress that has been accomplished here is similarly worthy of study. Sri Lanka today is one of the most peaceful and stable countries in the world. It is a country in the midst of a national revival. How this transformation has been achieved is at the heart of this seminar. During the course of these three days, all of the participants will have the opportunity to learn about the strategies adopted by the government of Sri Lanka in addressing its post-conflict development challenges. I particularly encourage the foreign delegates to make full use of that time here to interact with and learn from the people who were instrumental in our post-war efforts. I'm confident you will learn a great deal of value from their experiences. The war in Sri Lanka ended on the 18th of May 2009 with the defeat of the liberation of uh, Tamil, liberation tigers of Tamil Elam, better known as the LTTE. The LTTE was one of the most vicious terrorist organizations in the world and was once described by the American Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, as being among the most dangerous and deadly extremists in the world. Its defeat was greeted with an immediate and unprecedented outpouring of relief and joy throughout the country. However, at the same time, the government was deeply aware of the grave challenges and responsibilities it faced in the war's aftermath. Demining needed to be carried out over approximately 5,000 square kilometers of land. Reconstruction had to take place in the former LTT controlled areas. Nearly 300,000 internally displaced people needed to be resettled. Close to 12,000 surrendered LTT cadres had to be rehabilitated and then reintegrated. Normalcy had to be restored throughout the land and measures had to be taken to foster national reconciliation and economic development. The government of Sri Lanka has achieved remarkable progress on all these fronts during a remarkably short span of three years. During the course of this address, I will briefly discuss each of these post-war challenges and outline the ways in which they were dealt with. The most pressing issue that needed to be addressed was ensuring the well-being of the civilians who had been displaced from their homes. As the war progressed, the LTT moved people out of their towns and villages and retreated to its strongholds near the northeastern coast. By the time the war ended, the, with the LTT defeat, 295,873 internally displaced people were left in the government's care. They could not return home because their towns and villages were no longer safe for human occupation. As it retreated, the LTT had laid large quantities of 
anti-tank mines, anti-personnel mines, and many different types of improvised explosive devices in the areas it left behind. Demining those areas swiftly and resettling the internally displaced was a significant challenge for the state. In total, it was suspected that mines had been laid in more than 5,000 square kilometers of land. Demining such a vast area was a very difficult challenge that the government unhesitatingly undertook immediately after the war ended. Many foreign organizations came forward to assist the government, including the Danish demining group, the Indian Sarvatra group and the Horizon group, the UK-based mines advisory group and several others. These groups took on the responsibility of demining various ad identified tracts of land throughout the north and east. The Sri Lanka, the Corps of Engineers of the Sri Lankan Army was given the responsibility of demining the largest area of land which comprised almost 1,500 square kilometers and included most of the densely mined regions. The entire demining program was carefully planned and executed. Priority areas were chosen to maximize efficiency and enable the speedy return of the internally displaced. The first priority was to demine the towns and villages. The second priority was to demine the agricultural areas and paddy land. Paddy. The last priority was to clear the forested areas. I am pleased to note that as of today, nearly 